The movie begins at the funeral of a teenage boy named Darren Shan. Everyone is devastated at his loss, but shockingly, it turns out that he is very much alive. In fact, he is seen inside the coffin playing video games. The scene then cuts to the past, and Darren explains how good his life was going. He was popular in school, had cool friends and good grades, which made his parents proud of him. The only negative part about his life was his childhood best friend, Steve. One day at school, Steve convinces Darren to bunk their history class. The two then head to the rooftop where Steve destroys several light bulbs by throwing stones at them. He then challenges his friend to do the same, but right then, their history teacher overhears the commotion coming from the roof. As a result, the boys are caught, and their respective parents are informed. Darren comes off the worst of it, as his parents had always believed him to be an ideal student. They scold him ruthlessly and also ground him for two whole months. Furthermore, they forbid him from staying friends with Steve, citing that he is a bad influence. It's true. Steve's a douche. The next day, while walking to school, Darren informs Steve that his parents want him to break off their friendship. Upon hearing this, the latter is disheartened, and he accuses Darren of never standing up for himself. As they quarrel, a limousine passes by and a man inside throws out a flyer, which lands in front of them. It turns out to be an invitation to a circus event called a freak show. The flyer claims that it is held once every 500 years. The boys recall their teacher giving them a warning against attending the show because of its illegal nature, but they nevertheless decide to go to the circus. Later that night, Darren and Steve sneak out of their homes and head to the circus on their bicycles. It's revealed that the boys have peculiar interests. Darren is a big fan of spiders, while Steve is obsessed with vampires. At the venue, they buy a ticket from a dwarf human-like creature hiding behind a curtain. However, when Steve hands it the cash, the creature bites his hand and runs away. <laughs> The boys shrug off the strange incident and walk inside the theater. It's revealed that the show has attracted people from diverse age groups, mostly adults and old people. Soon, the show commences and the host, Mr. Tall, gets on stage. He thanks the audience for coming before presenting several strange freaks before them. At first, the Wolfman appears, and his presence scares everyone. Mr. Tall directs him towards a woman in the audience, and to everyone's horror, the Wolfman tears off her hands. But, before anyone can react, the woman's hands regenerates, and she walks towards the stage as if nothing has happened. Mr. Tall then introduces her as Cormo Limbs, another member of the freak show. Next up is Alexander Ribs, a man with no apparent ribs. Gertha Teeth is the third member and she can surprisingly break anything with her strong teeth. Ramus Two Bellies, her partner, can eat anything due to his two bellies. He even swallows a tricycle hole and spits it out in one piece. Then. A beautiful freak named Madame Truska calls Darren on stage and asks him to be her assistant. However, when she touches his face, she senses something forbidden inside of him and backs away. As the performance continues, Madame Truska wows the audience by growing facial hair in an instant. But, after her act, she unexpectedly calls for the show to be packed up. Despite her request, the next act, Vartan Crespoli, takes the stage with his spider partner, Okta. He impresses the crowd with a dance performance while playing an instrument. Steve recognizes Larton from a book about vampires and whispers to Darren that he is actually a vampire named Verhosten. Just then, the show is interrupted by police and townspeople, including the boy's history teacher. While the adults argue, Darren sneaks backstage and steals Okta, fascinated by its colorful appearance. But, as he attempts to leave, he is forced to hide when someone enters the room. To his surprise, Larton appears with an old man, discussing the threat posed by a group of hybrid vampires, known as the Vampanese. I hope you're all writing this down, cause I have no idea what the hell's going on. Suddenly, Steve barges in and begs them to turn him into a vampire. He says that he hates his life because he has no one. It turns out that Steve's father went missing long ago, while his mother is a drunkard. After a lot of convincing, Larton finally gives in and decides to taste his blood. However, the moment he puts it into his mouth, he realizes that Steve is a bad person. So, he refuses to turn the boy into a vampire, prompting him to storm off in anger. After a while, Larton finally realizes that his spider has gone missing, but before he can check the door, Darren freaks out and runs away. Way. He then reaches the road where he is picked up by the same car from earlier. Inside, two men, Merlo and Mr. Tiny, start interrogating him. However, it is soon revealed that they picked up the wrong boy. They were actually looking for his friend Steve. So, they drop Darren off at his house, but not before informing him that they will be in touch.
much. The following day, Darren takes Octa to school in his bag, hoping to keep her safe. However, before the class even starts, Steve spots them. He starts playing with the spider and accidentally drops her on the floor, allowing her to escape. However, instead of trying to catch the spider, Steve chases her with an intent to kill, causing a lot of commotion in the halls of the school. Many students run away in fear, while some even get injured. Having had enough, Octa finally decides to act, so she bites Steve on his cheek before escaping through the window. As a result, the latter falls to the ground and gets knocked unconscious because of the venom. In the next scene, Darren rushes back to the circus and pleads with Larton to save his friend's life. Worried about the repercussions of a human finding out about their existence, Larton initially refuses to help. However, he eventually agrees to provide the antidote on one condition, that Darren becomes his assistant vampire. This means that he will have to leave his family friends and his entire social life. Darren will also have to give up going to school. In short, he will have to die. Despite the dire repercussions, Darren who is desperate to save his friend agrees to the conditions and receives Larton's vampire blood. After this, they race to the hospital to save Steve's life. Larton immediately administers him with the antidote, which fortunately works, and Steve starts to recover. The movie then cuts to a few days later, where Darren begins to feel his body reacting to Larton's vampire blood. He starts craving raw meat. One day, he also gets a very tempting urge to kill and suck his sister's blood. However, he ultimately refrains himself from his bloodlust and runs back to his room. There, he finds a Larton sitting in the corner, reading his books. Larton warns Darren that he needs to leave his home as he has a threat to himself and his family. Darren doesn't want to do so, but after coming really close to harming his own sister, he decides to leave. However, he also doesn't want his parents to keep worrying about him forever, so he decides to fake his death. Later that night, on the rooftop of the house, Larton assists Darren in the act by breaking his neck. This will make everyone believe that he accidentally fell to his demise. The movie then cuts to the present. At Darren's funeral, all his friends, teachers, and family pay their respects, while Darren is alive and well, inside the coffin playing games on his phone. The same night, Larton digs up the grave and gets Darren out of the coffin, but before they they can leave. Merlo arrives out of nowhere and ambushes them. Fortunately, Larton fights him off and manages to subdue him temporarily. Following the close call, he takes Darren to the freak show campgrounds, where they meet a girl named Rebecca. Meanwhile, Steve is grief-stricken by his friend's death. As a result, he distances himself from society and becomes a maniac. When the pain becomes unbearable, one day, he contemplates ending it all, but just as he is about to commit the unthinkable, Mr. Tiny arrives there and stops him. He he mentions that he's aware of Steve's unfortunate life and his obsession with all things vampire. He then offers him a chance to become a vampanese. It turns out Tiny and Merlot are vampanese, and they are a different race of vampires who, unlike Larton and the others, murder humans to feed on their blood. It's also revealed that vampanese and the normal vampires are arch enemies, and they don't see eye to eye. As Steve hears everything in disbelief, Mr. Tiny discloses something even more shocking. He says that Darren is alive and happy in the other world, something which Steve had always dreamt of and aspired to. The revelation makes the latter angry, so without a second thought, he accepts the offer. Meanwhile, Darren slowly gets comfortable in the freak campground with the other freaks. He starts to train himself and helps others in their duties. One day, Darren goes through the pictures of his old life and decides to give Steve a call. But before he can do so, Larton arrives there, snatches the phone from Darren, and breaks it. That night, Mr. Tiny visits the freak camp to talk with Larton and Mr. Tall about Darren. It turns out the boy has special innate powers, so Mr. Tiny asks him to hand them over. Despite being enemies, a diplomatic Mr. Tall politely tells him that Neat will think about it. Afterwards, Larton instructs Darren not to leave the camp, as it is not safe for him anymore. He then begins to train Darren so that he can handle himself if he is ever in trouble. At first, the boy fails to lay a single hand on Larton, but as his training progresses, his skills and strength develop. On the other hand, Merlot turns Steve into a Vampanese, which gives him unreal powers. The boy also becomes more evil, and his first victim turns out to be none other than his history teacher. You gave me an F. F is for fangs. <laughs> Meanwhile, as Darren begins to feel hungry, he starts craving for fresh blood. To remedy this, Larton takes him to a nearby farm and sedates a man. He says that vampires never kill people, they just 
borrow their blood. However, despite his hunger, Darren cannot bring himself to do it, so they return back to the camp. Shortly after, the freak's peaceful campground is suddenly invaded by a group of ruthless Bampanese. Chaos ensues as the two sides engage in a brutal fight, resulting in a lot of bloodshed. It becomes clear that the Bampanese are searching for Darren, and soon enough, they find him hiding inside a costume room with Rebecca. The Bampanese attack Darren and a fierce brawl breaks out, but fortunately, thanks to the timely arrival of Larton, Mr. Tall, and the other freaks, the fight is eventually broken off, and Darren is saved from certain doom. However, when the dust settles, it is revealed that Merlot has kidnapped Rebecca. The following morning, Darren sets off to find her, as he blames himself for the entire incident. In the meantime, Mr. Tiny kidnaps his family, hoping to lure him into a trap. After a while, Darren arrives at his home and finds it empty. He then notices a flyer on the table, inviting him to the circus. Meanwhile, Larton also decides to join in on the fight, and so he gathers his weapons. In the next scene, Darren makes his way to the circus where he finds Rebecca and his family tied and hung up on the wall. He is also perplexed to see Steve with the Vampanese. Nevertheless, he attacks his former best friend without any hesitation, while Larton also arrives and starts tussling with Merlot. As Darren has not consumed any blood, he becomes very weak and easily gets bruised as compared to Steve. But right then, Rebecca frees herself and orders Darren to drink her blood so that he can get his energy back. Initially, he refuses to comply, but when Rebecca assures him that she will be fine, he sucks her blood. Elsewhere, Larton ends up being wounded very badly. But despite this, he uses the last of his strengths and stabs Merlot right in his heart, killing him. Immediately afterwards, Darren starts to fight with Steve again, while Mr. Tiny watches from a distance. Having had enough, he decides to intervene and stop them. Mr. Tiny resuscitates Merlot using his special powers by turning him into a dwarf creature. He then asks the two boys to come with him. Amazed by his power, Steve immediately obliges but Darren does not. In the aftermath of the showdown, Larton hypnotizes Darren's family so that their recent memory is wiped. This way, they won't remember the supernatural events that took place right in front of their eyes. The movie ends as Darren returns back to the camp, where all of the freaks welcome him warmly and make him feel home. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.